Brilliant from Kennedy. Couldn't resist the shot. That's gone in off the defender. And determined, you lose your little player. And it's in. It's a goal from Gilmer. Jimmy Gilmer has scored for Falkirk. Finnegan's cross. Stephen Thompson. Falkirk have the lead after a quarter of an hour. Mackenzie slips. It goes straight to McGuffey. McGuffey shoots from his own half. And that is incredible. He's taking them all on here. Catch him if you can. You can't. That is amazing. That is phenomenal. A touch of individual inspiration from Kevin McAllister. This is Falkirk Daft. Vier Mistrena. I went that when I was over in Copenhagen. That means we Danish for we are the champions. And I'm hoping to be singing that in the karaoke over in Copenhagen. That damn Paul Hartley couldn't do us a favour. What a shock. It does mean, however, that the first chance to win the league is in our own hands this Saturday against Montrose. And there's a bit to discuss about that on this week's Falker Daft. I am your host, John McAnally, and as you can hear, the weekend has taken its toll on me. And as ever, I'm joined by the Ginger God of Pod, the one-man band in the main stand, a lover of the prawn sandwich, it's Ross Wayne. Good evening, sir. We good? Apart from your uh, sore throat? I've, I've caught that. I've caught something along the way. So I, someone advised that if you have a bit of cayenne pepper, honey, lemon, hot water, it stops. Because I've had a really bad cough. I don't know how I've caught it. Probably on the plane. It's probably COVID, Ross. Um, but... Um, always good, apart from I sound quite husky and quite sexy. Yeah, very sexy actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, I was on a stag do in Denmark at the weekend, so missed the Edinburgh game. Absolutely gutted, but obviously had my phone out constantly, just keeping looking for the update. Couldn't find it anywhere with Sky Sports or anything on. Jesus. So I was just sitting and just watching the updates come in, and now that beautiful twenty-five minutes when we win the league, and I'm getting all excited. And then it didn't happen, but it, it was a brilliant result for the Bairns, and we'll get into that in a bit. It was it was a brilliant uh, afternoon. The only thing that could have made it even better would have been uh, would would have been Aki's uh, dropping points. But listen, as you've said, it's within our own hands now, and a huge huge crowd are going to head up to Montrose on Saturday, and uh, we'll be amongst it. Yep, just under 2,000 as we record this podcast. Um, 2,500 tickets are available with an extra additional 900, so snap them up, Bairns. Make this, it could be a brilliant party. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, we're, we, me and Ross are going up. We're on the 10 to 12 train from Larbor. Yeah, something like that, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to go up, we're going to have a great day out, and hopefully... As Ross and you've seen on our social medias, this could be this generation's coin bank. So get your yeah. tickets. It'll be a laugh anyway. And like you say, it's in our own hands. The, the annoying thing about it, however, the really annoying thing about it is, see if we get a point. We've pretty much won the league, right? But we haven't. Do you know what I mean? So it goes to that because it's on that horrible, horrible goal difference thing. You're thinking, That's well, true. We've, won, we've won it sort of, but we've not. So it's just going to be this really indecisive. Should we pitch invade or no? Pitch no, me. No, no. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, but I reckon we'll get up to intros and we'll talk about that uh, in the company of our friend from intros, Mark Gray, a bit later on in the show. Before that, though, we've got to talk about Edinburgh and I've got a few other things to deal with. Uh, first of all, though, thanks to our sponsors, the Lava Cup. Thanks to Ian and the team over there. It's been held at the Falkirk Stadium on Saturday, the 25th of May. The opening ceremony taking place at 11 30 and the tournament kicking around about 12. Um, all the donate, it's all getting done for charity, uh, donating to Strathcan Hospice and the FDAMH. If you want to get involved with Falkirk uh, football fans and training, that's the guys that are organising this. You can talk to Doogie, Mark or Ian, they will get you sorted. We've talked about how good this group of lads are, um, how much they've really bought in. You can hear them um, a, a few episodes ago, they were on, and we're going to have them on again before the end of the season to give you more information on Falkirk fans and training. But as they've said to us on numerous occasions, it's really helped those guys with their mental health. They've become a great group of lads. And like I say, they're never out of that hospitality. Uh, so if you want any details on Falkirk football fans in training or the Lava Cup, check out the links below. That's in the bio. Mm-hmm. 
um, and get yourself along to the Falkirk Stadium on the 25th of May. A um, couple of messages uh, that have been coming in over the last uh, week. We had our friend in Texas, um, Ross, Mr. Jamie Douglas, has been in touch. Hello, Jamie. We love Jamie's correspondence. He's out there. He, he's, he, you can just tell how gutted he is to be missing out on, on this. I know. Yeah, you can tell what he messages, can't you? I know. So uh, Jamie's been in touch. He's talked about the player of the season, and he, he's... he's I want to read out his message because I thought it was a really interesting point. He says, been thinking long and hard about the Falkirk Daft play of the season. I get it that Calm has been amazing and his goals have won us uh, games out of nothing in some cases. Uh, some cases. Big Hendo, Mr. Falkirk in that midfield, or even when he drops back, has never looked out of place and what he does, but the whole team has been absolutely immense this season, chipping in with grit and determination, driving us for late wins, etc. Nizzy's running skills are up there, unrecognised as well, with Leon, the quiet man, pogging away, doing his thing. But for me... Overall, it has to be big captain call at the back. Being that voice in everyone's ears through the game, shutting up solid the back with John's big tam, <laughs> even driving forward with some sexual footwork and some bang tidy goals as well, when the centre-backs are usually the big heaters at set pieces. I think getting the captaincy has been his making, driving us to be great again. So big call for me is my play of the season. I miss, yeah. you can't. The, the, the problem is you can't argue against that. You can't no, argue, and I, I cannot wait to get into this debate um, once we get near the end of the season, who the Falkirk Daft Player of the Year is going to be, De Ross, because you look at that part and every single Falkirk supporter you go to, it's going to have a different answer for you. No, you are. It's, it's a really, really tough, uh, excuse the pun, it's a, it's a tough call. And um, I genuinely think it's anybody's, like I know the, the shouts for Morrison and he's probably leading the way for me just now as well but it's a very very tight call really is I, I know you just you know we get talk about it's four goals that we can he's the top scorer now in the SPFL mm -hmm. four goals in Lawn Shankland yeah. um, it, you know it's it, it's, it's such a tough call. I think, though, I'm worried. We, we asked a couple of weeks ago, Cal Morris or Cal Miller, who's better? We're going to have to say well, after after the last couple of weeks, it's going to have to yeah. be Morris and Sorry Calvin. To be, it has to be Calvin. Sorry Morris. Calvin. Um, but it's, I, I, I mean, I don't think many supporters. I don't think you can look beyond Morrison now. I really no. don't think the fact he's playing out in the wing. You know, I, you know, I love big sexy Tam. Again, Jamie's argument for call Hendel has been brilliant. Leo, I mean, these are all big players for us. There's, you can go through the team and actually yeah. almost justify pretty much your. Brad, I mean, we've not even put Brad Spencer in the mix. No, He's I know. Unbelievable. Brad phenomenal. Spencer has been the big difference. You know, it's just oh, yeah. But yeah, I, Every, I everyone's deserving. Debate. Yeah, I cannot everyone's. wait for that debate, and we're, we're, we're going to have that on Falkirk Daft as the season comes to an end. Um, do you know who else has been in touch, Ross? Shock me. Denon Lewis has been back in no, touch. No way. I can't believe it. Hello, guys. You probably noticed I wasn't selected for walking yesterday, and I assume they must assume that it was an international duty. Not so. I've now had it with Dopey. As Morrissey once sang, he holds more grudges than high court judges. Right, I'm going to start working out who this is, see if they start making Morrissey reference. I'm going to work out who Denon is. Of course, it's the real Denon, you never know. Mm -hmm. um, he just can't even get over my altercation with a steward and ejection from the ground during last week's home versus Barnet after I was unwell in the Jusson's family stand. Don't be said he had no option but to leave me out of the match day squad for the trip to Southend. This is the sort of poor man management that I just don't want to be a part of. How was I supposed to know that the wifey in the nice camel hair coat and pearl necklace combo was the chairman Rupert's wife? And how was it my fault that she was sat in the landing zone of my projectile vomit? Petty, petty, petty little walking FC and me are finished. It's over for them and the next episode in Denon's journey to stardom beckons. Great result for Annan yesterday and that is where I hope to be heading. Even though I hate Am on Aki's more than I hate Falkirk, I have to say well done to them for pushing Falkirk all the way to the end of March, while Seref Zengen is now into the eight week of his drunken stupor since Falkirk stupidly turned down his more than generous bid for Miller Morrison argument. A rose and ranking inspired Aki's have stayed on Falkirk's coattails. When Seref finally does sober up, he will surely reward John Rankin with another three years onto his contract for his amazing steering of the rudderless ship. I know that the only two Aki's, 
popped in some intros for a wee bowl of soup on their way up to Cove yesterday, and the rest of their trip after that really was a trip to remember. It is Montrose next for you guys, and my Montrose friend wants all the Falkirk fans to know that no one is invited round for soup before the game. Although he often thinks he is Jesus after his match day soup, he says that he can't actually feed the 5,000. The Angus Post also wants Falkirk fans to know what they ha- that they have banned all mushroom recipes from the Montrose area next week, and this will be strictly enforced. The thought of trying to control a full house of celebrating bears out of their heads on soup, salad and strong enough is too much to countenance. Up ya hell rat! Love Denon. love it absolutely i love it but um thank you so much uh, denon for getting in touch we love your correspondence um if you want to rate and review us as well uh, denon's actually left a review on our um, apple podcasts as well so uh please rate rate and review the the podcast as any ex Falkirk player because that will give us hours of amusement as well uh, right bit of club news and let's get into it we've got a couple of competitions to mention as well um Falkirk Daft meets Tam McManus it was out last week uh, we hope you enjoyed it we've got a lot of great feedback on it Ross yeah we did yeah loads of messages uh directly through social media tagging Tam in as well so uh hopefully that means he'll uh, come back and chat with us at some point or he's hoping to go for a beer with us uh uh, and big prof as well, which would be uh, which would be outstanding. That'd be great. Um, I I love the the Anthony Stokes and the fact that he saved Carl yeah. Dodd and Big Scott Higgins from getting basically murdered. And 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 obviously Stokes is now in the jail, so he's never been... <laughs> exactly Stokes is in the jail now. <laughs> yeah. um, but I tell you what, we've got something really exciting coming up for you in the next month. We spoke today to a modern day legend of Falkirk, Mister Will Volks. Um, and we had a brilliant, brilliant conversation with Will. Um, he's got some big news coming uh, soon, f- which I'm sure you'll hear about. But um, he, we spoke to him about his Falkirk career, his time up here, some brilliant chat. Um, you know, we're talking about, obviously, the fact he came up here and played for free, the goals he scored, you know, working under Husty, moving from effectively a centre back into into the midfield. You know, yep. he was brought in originally as a fullback, believe it or not. Um, the players he played with, um, and just generally his his time at Falkirk. It was a brilliant conversation. We thanks Will for for coming on and doing that, and you'll be able to hear that in the next month or so. We'll get that in the diary, um, and that's our next Falkirk Daft meets Ross. Yeah, that was a fantastic hour uh, spent chatting to him. It, 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 we, again, we probably could have spent longer. He had he had loads of stories as well, and um, yeah, it's interesting actually. His journey, what a guy! Like, but listen, we all knew he was a special, special guy anyway. Yeah. But I think it just kind of firms that up. And uh, yeah, as 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 everyone will hear, uh, we've done our best to try and persuade him to come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we did definitely try and put in verbal right contract. Well. Yeah. <laughs> we tried and all. We've got. We've, we think by the end of the podcast, we brokered over a deal for his return. Just said, you know, just come up and play for a wee bit, well, you know, just for a laugh. At yeah. the end of the career, just come back up for a laugh. It'll be good. It'll be good. So hopefully, we can get well back at some point. But that podcast will be going out in the near future. Um, other club <laughs> news. Um, just sold my car to Gary Oliver has signed a contract extension. Gary is going to be with us. The one and only Gary goes, he's going to be here till 2026. Ross, what do you make of that? Yep, yep. Happy, especially on his uh, on his Ford this year. Um, he's, he's, he's played a vital role in this uh, push for the title. And um, yeah, he deserves it, I think. Uh, I don't, I don't know if he'll be a starter next year, but then he's not been a starter this year. So um, I think he's, I think he's, he's I think a really he's been signed for the squad next. Year. I... You know, I think he's been signed for the squad, and I think it's probably important to have an experienced player like Gary around the dressing room as well. And that's probably yeah. what John McGuinn's John McGuinn's looked at. He won't be looking to upset the apple cart, and that's the thing that you'll be looking to retain that team and that team spirit uh, for if if we do go on into the championship. Well, so, we've seen how important using a squad is this year like it's not been yeah. just 11 boys I mean, and look, as you alluded to the goals that gary scored coming off the bench you know mm. and now he's got a good song as well so we can't we can't let him go that's it that's it um and you'll see today that ross is sporting the new retro kit which has been released by o'neill's uh, the 91 94 away top 
what what player does immediately springs to mind when you, you you you're wearing the top just now, Ross? If you're you, watching the video version, you know I'm going to shock you because it's probably not the first name that you would think of. I always think it's Scott Sloan. Scott Sloan, there you go. Do you know why? Because um, like loads of great players have wore this shirt. However, um, one match always sticks out in my head, which is, uh, well, apart from staying on halfway line, because we wore that that day as well. But I always remember Scott Sloan scoring like a scissor kick up at Dundee. And it was like a Monday night Scottish Cup tie that was live on the BBC. And... Um, yeah, I I just have him, memories of him scoring his goal and then like almost running towards me and my dad. He wasn't, but he was running that's, in that direction. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's and, an amazing uh, memory. Arms out, he was just, yeah, it was brilliant. I'm, what waiting, about for, you? I'm waiting for payday. It's Rich, Richie Cadet for me. I mean, Richie Cadet is yeah. one that straight springs me because you just see there's an iconic picture of Richie wearing it. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting for payday and that will be getting added to the collection. It's absolutely better. A lot of people wearing it at the stadium on Saturday. There was. There was an awful yeah. lot of people wearing it at the stadium. So I think, um, like every other shirt that we've sold this season, um, it's 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 proven really, really popular. Even before this came out, we'd sold, what, 5,000 shirts this year. So yeah. um, I'd imagine this is probably going to add another 1,000 onto that number anyway. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you, you can get it at the club shop or it's available through the grief sport. The track top looks sexy as hell as the well. Track, the, the track top the suit top. I don't get, I've never worn a track suit top in my life, right? Not really but, a tracky top kind of I'm guy. Not a tracky top kind of guy, but it does look good. Man. It does look good. I quite like the retroness of it. But um yeah they're, they're both available on the grief sport website or through the club shop. Ola's back <laughs> what a shock this is uh basically Ola's back from Cove I'm pretty much sure because of that video when he celebrates Falkirk beating Cove. I'm it's it's sure worth it. I saw that went. Yeah. See you later, pal. Yeah, it's worth it, I think. Uh, like, I know he can't play again. <laughs> but Can he not play again? Can he definitely not play again? I don't think so. No, he's, I think you're only allowed to play for uh, the team but, that you've signed for, but I could be he, wrong. Well, no, he's our player, so he shouldn't be. He is, he... but I think he would have had to have been recalled within that window. I, I, oh. Listen, I, I could be wrong, but from what I've seen online, that and he wasn't in the squad on um, right. Saturday, and we had a we had a small bench, smaller bench on Saturday. So I think if he was fit, maybe he's injured. Listen, he could be injured, so that's maybe the reason. Um, I, yeah, I need, need to clarify the ruling on that because. I want the bands of Ben Ola on against Cove Rangers. Oh, <laughs> that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Would yeah, be... I know, but if it's no going reason. to cost us points, then potentially with the league, forget it. But no. for banter, if Ola played yeah. against Cove Rangers, it would be phenomenal banter. And then he scores and then runs over to the Cove dugout <laughs> and then does the same dance that he's just done in the tunnel. That, now, that, that's the thing that dreams are made of right there. Yeah. That is the thing that dreams are made of. So Ola's back. Um, he's one that's out of contract, I think, at the end of the season, isn't he? Yeah, and I, I don't see him being offered yeah, anything, if I'm being honest. No, I know. John McGuinn did say that there was a couple of players, there's contracts out on the table. You suspect Sean Mackey would be one of those? Could be. Yeah, there's a few players. Nicky Hogarth. Gary might have been one of them. Nicky yeah. Hogarth um, might be the other one. Ben Yates is ben still... Yates. Um, ben Yates, that's the thing. about there. Yep. That's the three that you'd be looking at. Um, so I think Sean Mackey, I think for his versatility, we saw mm. him at left back against Queens, we saw him at centre half and apparently played very, very well on on, on Saturday. He did. No, he, yeah, Sean Mackey was great on um, Saturday. He did pick up a booking that was a bit silly and I thought, oh, here we go, because you know what you know what Sean's like? He loves a tackle and he loves a, you know, getting stuck in, uh, but it didn't affect his game and uh, he did really well. Yeah, um, so uh, Sean's um, Sean, I think, could be one that that's a deal on the table for. I would certainly like to see Sean Mackey getting signed up because I do think uh, he's a cha he'll, he'll he'll be fine in the championship and he can play centre half, he can play left yeah. back, and that's kind of versatile. It just goes to show you with Hendel being injured on Saturday, we mm. need him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? We we, we yeah. need him because obviously with Big Tam being out as well. We were short, so that versatility to move him, and that's what I like about the fullbacks in that area. So Finn can move into midfield if needs be. He can play right back, and it's good yeah. to have. It's good to have that versatility in a player. That they're quite comfortable. I, I, I did see a really cracking comment on social media on Saturday, and it was um, uh, obviously with Hendel being, <laughs> Hendel being injured, 
And someone says, oh, maybe we should recall Brad Mackay. And then the next person replied to them said, why don't we just play argument at centre-back? <laughs> like, play the big you know man I mean? wherever he wants to play. Bring in captain Chaos. Put him in at the centre-half just for bands. Brilliant. Um, again, not enough game time for captain Chaos. and I, I'm, We need to unleash the beast at some point, John McGon. Let's get big Alfie playing. Uh, so yeah, um, Oa back, and we'll I, 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 we'll let we'll look into that rule for next week. Or sure, someone on here will say you're talking shite, John. There's no chance you can play, but it would be the dream, like Ross says, to score the winner against Cove and dance in front of Paul Hartley. Be amazing. Yeah. Um, episode 13 of the Falkirk Football Club podcast, not this podcast, the Falkirk Football Club podcast that they do. The official one is out now, as Colin is joined by FSS members Charlene Honey and Ryan Didcock, who give you an update on what's going on with the Falkirk Support Society and the progress that they've made. So that, I've not listened to it yet, so I'll be looking forward to yeah, no, I did. I gave it a listen. Yep, as always, uh, give it a listen. Same with walking down Hope Street, you, you need to support the 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 other podcast don't we as well as our one um but um yeah no it was really really uh good update um i didn't make it along to the fss agm on friday night i believe it was uh, pretty well attended though and um all good there's positive no stuff change, now there's no change though i believe because there is no one opposing that's right i don't think there's any changes there yeah yeah so, uh, really good podcast though um colin uh does, does a great job with that and um as we've just mentioned about walking down hope street as well who i know they've got some new episodes coming up as well it's all it's all good folk up content and absolutely inject the folk up content into us. we're the only one that regularly says like shit and fuck obviously but um... I mean, yeah well that is that is true you won't, you won't get any shits and fucks on walking down hope street no you won't at all no at, or or on the official club <laughs> website you won't get uh he was shite at the weekend though wasn't he no you're not gonna get that on not gonna happen, you'll it? definitely get it here though you'll definitely get it here um so yeah no get, get it and have a listen to that. and actually on that as well we talk about speaking to guys from the focus support side we're gonna be catching up with derek from the falkirk foundation there's been a wee bit of some stuff going on recently. You would have seen a statement from the Falkirk Supporters Society um, about the women's team and things like that. And there's, we're going to speak to Derek from the foundation uh, before the end of the season as well. Just find out, because I don't think a lot of people are aware that the foundation is separate to the club and it is from the society, it's Supporters Society as well. So we're just going to get Derek on and chat to him about what the work the foundation does does in the community and what the future holds for it as well. So we're going to speak to Derek before the end of the season. So looking forward to that. Um, and talking of speaking to people, let's speak now to a man who he was gutted. He, he, part of the commercial team at uh, Falkirk Football Club. Uh, we didn't get the chance to get him on, but let's get him on now. Uh, Graham Carbis, everyone. How are we? You good? good. Very well, sir. Very right, well. So what are you selling us today, Graham? Um, what's your budget? <laughs> See, that's the right question, isn't it? That's the right <laughs> question. That's why he's in my I have folk going... after a uh, sponsor in the Kevin McAllister stand next year. That's right. I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. I've got to say thank you very much to Graham as well, who kindly put our logo on because you got the LED. The LED screens were obviously in for the the TNS Airdrie game at the weekend. There, Graham, and we very kindly put the Falkirk Dad logo, so that looked great. And I was just like. Somebody show my mom going, look, our wee podcast is on the on the old uh, LEDs. Look at that. She was. Uh, we've done it for um, we've done it for quite a lot of the partners. Um, yeah. Flung in folk at Daft, put FSS in it on as well. So it, obviously for highlights and stuff, it'll be fantastic. Obviously, there's no TV camera covers there, so um, just to give you a little bit more of your show, your mum. To be honest. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. I pre- appreciate that. I appreciate that. So we we missed you when you when obviously Paddy and the other Graham were on recently, Graham. Um, in terms of like, I mean, the commercial success of the club this this season. I mean, you guys, we've we've talked about it so many times. I mean, you you'll sell everything, Graham, absolutely everything to anyone. And you know, you've done so so well in in terms of bringing in revenue for the club this season. How how easy has that been with the success that's come on the park? Is it is it made your presumably it makes your job a lot easier? Yeah, to be honest, it makes us look good at our jobs this season. To be honest. Um, but on, on terms of last season, the, the partners were coming in uh, thick and fast. We were not thick and fast, sorry, we were, we were building relationships. And it just shows to the point that where we got to for this season when there is 
Um, good things happening on the pitch where the boys are doing well. It's, it's kind of led us up to the next stage. Um, I dare say at this stage for, for next season, um, it's looking like championship. So that relationship will go to the next to the next level. Um, and we've, we're certainly building. There's a lot of good things and a lot of things that can't be announced yet, but to come for next season, which is fantastic. And it, it just shows what's happening on the pitch is, is certainly affecting in a fantastic way for for next season, which is we're, we're all buzzing, we're all looking forward to it, and we're, we're all. Um, I, I, I get uh, excited with selling anything from a pound to, to 20,000. So, in terms of next season, that's I'm quite sad actually. It's quite exciting for, for myself personally to, to go and to see what we can bring into the club, new partners, local and nationwide as well. So, yeah, very excited. So, all good. Are we going to go to the point where we're going to make a, a video like Motherwell as well, Graham, with you uh, trying to convince Taylor Swift to sign uh, some commercial deals at Falkirk? Uh, no, I was only phoning Britney Spears this morning. Didn't, I... didn't, didn't want to get any money off her, just leave her to it and we can do our own job, so we're all good. <laughs> she, she's still got your number, has she? Uh, she did. She never messaged for a while, but it's all good now. Good, good, to, good to you. <laughs> um, in terms of, like, um, is there anyone... Just using this as a platform, I guess, Graham. In case anyone listens to the podcast, is there any businesses out there that you know? When I think of, like, obviously, Falk at Distillery have, have moved in. To, you know, they started uh, distilling whiskey. Rosebank, God, they've. I mean, it's looking amazing up at Rosebank yeah. now. Um, you know, I think I talked about Enios, Malcolm Logistics, all these. Is there any kind of um, businesses you like to target? You want to get an in for? Because maybe one of our listeners potentially has that in for you. Yeah, there's 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 several uh, businesses that we want to tap into. We've got our, our fingers on a lot of pies as well, so it's there's a lot of plates spinning. Uh, locally, uh, with the whiskey companies, Graham Stewart is building relationships. Uh, the Rosebank have used the stadium for different things as well, so that relationship is there. There's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes, which is um, like any of us we've, we've spoke to any of us we've, we've had feedback from them we spoke to we're trying to get in another contact to alexander's so Brilliant. those sort of companies but there's a lot of companies that are in football just now that are coming out and there's new ones coming in so we're, we're kind of got our, our eye on social media all the time to see what's happening and checking out what different clubs are doing to see if there's anything we can jump onto and and, and vice versa as well so it's, it's, it's we're, we're pretty much covered and we're trying our best to, to cover a lot more so it's all good Alexander's feels like a, a company that over the years you were su- like you're surprised you never really see their name attached to the club because they've obviously been uh, a huge part of the the employment uh, of the town for so so long as well. Yeah, no, definitely it's something somebody we'd, we'd love to speak to. We have got a couple of different contacts, and somebody on Saturday has opened up another contact for us, at Alexander. So um, fingers crossed that will be a that will be tomorrow morning job um, to jump onto that one and try and at least get them over to the stadium or try and get a coffee with them or something but it's uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're definitely looking to get a lot more local companies involved in the club I, I guess well, well the, you strike while the, 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 the iron's hot Graham at this point with the success on the part with the with the potential of going invincible this season and uh, do you know what I would, you know the likes of Malcolm Allen who Ma- Malcolm Allen would just be a chairman at the, at the club and, and things like that and I've, I've not seen any Malcolm Allen stuff up, which which surprises me as well. I mean, as we know in this day and age, budgets are stretched for everything. But I mean, it's great that there are those local businesses out there that you can go and and find and, and target and potentially bring them back into the club. Yeah, uh, people like Malcolm Allen, obviously Gordon Robinson, um, behind the scenes is doing like golf days and stuff like that as well. Um, so they, they are still putting money into the club, which is. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, guys like that are not maybe they're not doing their brand awareness, or they've maybe had that, or they're maybe thinking about it in the future. But it's it's one of those ones where they are in the background doing stuff as well. So, yeah, I mean, we can. Yeah, do Malcolm that. Allen are big. Malcolm Allen are big uh, sports to the the Bairns Business Club as well, Graham, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Gordon Gordon's at pretty much every single one. So. Yeah, if you, if you want uh, Malcolm Allen, if you want any adverts, we can do them for you as well. Uh, no problem at all. We can do a deal. Malcolm Allen for the finest rolling <laughs> slice this side of Falkirk. There we go. You're needing to get a new job away from the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worse today as well, Graham. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, are you guys happy with what you have have done this season? Looking forward to next season and potentially being in that championship? Because um, obviously, with being in the championship, 
prices will go up, no doubt. And um, we're waiting to hear what is our, our Falk, you know, our Falkirk daft. We're still waiting to sign off our Falkirk daft <laughs> stuff for next season. So we're just waiting to see what Graham will sell us. Um, but yeah, um, I guess he's looking, like you said, Graham, you're looking forward to that next step up. Yeah. In terms of last season, uh, this season, sorry, we're, we're currently um, over and above, our, um, just short of our target, sorry, um, and over and above where we were last season. Um, which is is fantastic to see. We're 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 not far off our target, which is. I mean, how long have we got to finish your target, Graham? <laughs> uh, the spy figures going on to Falkirk Daft for sponsorship for next season. So, <laughs> right. yeah. there you go. Um, right, help, a... Graham, help Graham get to the club target. If you're a business out there right now, Graham will sell you something. Trust me. No matter what budget you've got out there, if you're a green grocer. If you're a big company, Graham will have something in the back pocket for you to sponsor and uh, to make get the club hitting their target and hitting those commercial targets. To finish. If I don't, uh, if I don't hit this target, my kids will be eating the grass in the back garden. So come on, guys, get the finger out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. I sell that. Is. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Graham, is there anything left? Like, so obviously you're mentioning you're just shy of the the target for this year, but is there a so what's what's left for the fans or? local businesses that they can do this season and I suppose the second part of the question is what are you already taking sort of any sort of pre-advanced sort of bookings for next year as well? Um, in terms of pre-bookings for next year um, we just need to, to confirm 100% what league we're going to be in so in hospitality the, the match sponsors the captain sponsors what well, you guys are, 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 um, are doing at the club which is fantastic by the way thanks for all your support um, a lot of that will be coming available. Stuff like the sponsor in the Kevin McAllister stand, which is, is quite a big one for us. We've, we've not been able to achieve that yet, which is maybe one for a local company like Alexander Dennis or something. But the Rosebank of... Kevin McAllister stand, and then you can have a Falkirk sponsored whiskey as well, Graham. I know. We, I, I, we tried to speak to, no, well, we, we did speak to Cadbury about obviously that thing with the crunchy and stuff like that as well, but um, they've, not, they've not took the bait for it so far. so we need to get a Falkirk fan. In fact, why, why don't you guys apply for a job at Cadbury, get the job, do a sponsorship, and then come back to Falkirk Daft? That, that sounds like a <laughs> fantastic plan. I, I don't know anybody at Cadbury's as well. But in terms of the, the fans putting money at the club through sponsorship, the player sponsorship, there's uh, a few left for the for the younger guys, like your 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 um, Reese Walker and stuff like that. Um, are you doing deals, Graham? Are you doing deals? Because the young team will love a deal if you're doing a deal on any of the... Any end of season deals? No. Of course, we. I'm always open to deals, so that makes it sound like a drug dealer. But let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, to, if there's, there's some remaining tops, so we've got some remaining tops, some remaining boot sponsors. Yeah, sponsors. there's there's very f- few and far between, but uh, it's probably like your uh, Scott Hen- Honeyman and stuff like that. Heritage, so. heritage top sponsors as well. You still got a few of those left. Uh, there's three or three or four heritage top sponsors. Um, we're just confirming what date we're actually going to do the heritage. Uh, watch the players train and get lunch and stuff like that as well. So that will that's that's going to be a conversation this week. So we will get that confirmed. Is that the day I'm going to get to meet Tom Lang because we are obviously the sponsors of the Tom Lang Heritage Top. And I'm just is that the training order been lifted yet? Well, that's what I'm just wanting to double check what date it'll be because it's <laughs> it's lifts up in the next wee while. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but I see. Anyway. If you want to do a deal, if you've got, you know, there is stuff to be done there. If you're thinking, I love it, I love a, a frame sign folk at top from a season which could potentially be historic making if we go invincible. Graham's your man to speak to. He will do you a deal and um, get him to his target so his kids don't have to eat grass. That's pr- that, that, that's the big sell. Get Graham <laughs> to his target so his kids don't have to eat grass. Uh, but yeah, listen, Graham, thank you so much for coming on. We missed you when you were on. Uh, Paddy and Graham were on the last time, so it's great to to have you on. Um, and fingers crossed, um, we're selling for the championship next season. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, thanks very much for for all your support, man. We've got a good relationship with uh, Falkirk Daft and the club, which has has been brilliant. I think that the that sponsorship really helped. We called on since Steve McGinn given the captain's armband over the fans, which has been you guys can take inspiration to to the championship. So all good. Well, yeah, I mean, I've I've tried to explain to you. I've tried to explain to Ross. I've tried to explain to everyone. It's like Brett the Hitman Hart used to do, you know. And no one, no one understands this. You know, it's, it was simple. Ross came up with the idea, you know, and but he. But no one's taking Ross. Me. You, Ross, you promised me that there was not going to be in the wrestling chart. You promised I know, me. I'm really sorry. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> uh, but uh, listen, long may it continue uh, to next season as well because you know, it, like you see, I think that you know, as a podcast, as a supporter, it's the proudest thing for me. This podcast is done um, with the Falkirk Daft Arm Band and those kids at the end of the the game. You see the faces. It's, the faces are fantastic. They you really know, are. Actually, with Stevie Jackson, who works in the, the well, his uh, granddaughter. His granddaughter got it. We, we found out it was his granddaughter that got it at the weekend. And if you check out our social media, you see the look in that little girl's face yeah. and. The looks and the faces throughout the season have been absolutely unbelievable. I noticed the club gave the the birthday boy the, the boy with a sign. I noticed that uh, Steve McGinn caught up with him, so that was. That oh, was did you get that? Brilliant! That's the job done for us then. Fantastic! <laughs> glad that happened without because we were going to send him up. We had a his address ready to send it out, but I'm glad Stephen got that sorted. So that's great news, brilliant news. And um, Graham, thanks so much for your time, um, and and thanks for doing what you do at the club. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Speak to you soon. So there you go, uh, Graham Carbis from the commercial team at Falkirk, just giving you a wee update of where the commercial team are. And there are there is there are package if you want to be involved and have your name in the program and all that sort of stuff. I mean, we've sponsored a couple of things this season because uh, we like to say we like to put money back into the club. Um, so yeah, it's get in touch with Graham and the team over there. They'll have something for your budget if you are a small business. You know they've got a different ranges of packages, so get in touch with Graham and the club. Um, we should have a beer sponsor, and that leads us into Falkirk Beer. Names for Falkirk Beer, and uh, we've got three tickets to give away to the Larbert Ale Festival, which is always one of the best nights of the year at the Dobby Hall tw- this Friday and Saturday. Ross, have you attended the beer festival at Larbert? Uh, Do you know I've not, but I've I've seen loads of stuff about it over the years. Um, Every it year, I'm there. there. Every yeah, year, it does look good. I, I don't think the thing is, I don't think I'm going to be shit. Like, see if I'm going to Montrose on Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to swing this year. I don't mm. know. No. Uh, but uh, we asked you on our Twitter, we had three pairs of tickets to give away. And thanks uh, to Camera, um, who are the campaign for Real Ale. And uh, they have given us three pairs of tickets to give away. And I think you might get a couple of free drinks with us. Um, so we asked on our Twitter streams to name a beer after a Falkirk player. So if a Falkirk player was a beer. Um, past or present, we weren't too, too fast. Um, let's go through a few of them, Ross, and you can decide on the three winners. Okay. okay. Um, Mark, who actually we're going to speak to from the Montrose podcast, he reached out anyway, and I actually thought this was very good. Russell Latta IPA was very good. That's that, that, that very clever. That, that, that is very, very clever, good. but he's not getting it. Um, right. Hendo, uh, I think it's been a previous uh, pundit on the show. Uh, Tiger, McLaughlin, Asian Lager. Mm. Um, Ola, Dub, Special, Reserve, Lawal. Mm. Mm. Right, here we go. Uh, what have we got? Grant Thompson, another uh, previous pundit. Peroni Parks, quite good. I like that one. That was good. Uh, John Harding goes for Stephen Elvis, Juice Presley. <laughs> uh, this I not Grant. By the way, Grant got a bit obsessed with this because he kept sending the number as he came in. This is a great one. So, Heineken Edie. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Brian Newcastle Brown, of course. Uh, another one from Grant Skull Donaldson. Right, Grant's definitely getting the Skull Skull Donaldson. Grant's like got the tickets. Uh, that, yeah, that's we'll, we'll give Grant. A, 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 is it a, a ticket or a pair of tickets? A pair of tickets for a pair of tickets, right? Brilliant, brilliant. Right, Pedro Matinho Garden, <laughs> Matinho Garden. I like, like that. It. Mark that's Allen, you're one. getting a pair of tickets. That's good. That's uh, a good one. Kenny Jukers is decent. That's since 1876. Stephen McGuinness, how obvious is that one? Of course, yes, of course. Oh, that's Rick a good Jones. one too. Uh, Chris Innes Gun, there you go. Uh, who else have we got? Paul Smith. Since 1876 is coming up with all these, by the way. So he's going to get a pair of tickets, I think. We'll just check. I I think looking down the rest of it, Colin Samuel Adams, Boston Lager, very good. Leon McCann of Tenants is actually quite good as well. Oh, listen, my love of Tenants, we need to give whoever, whoever's done that Leon one. Leon right McCann of Tenants is getting it then. Leon McCann of Tenants, there we go. Harvey Lister and Grant Thompson. And who else did we say was getting it? Mark, 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 Mark Allen. Pedro Matinho Garden. There you go. That's our three winners of 
the tickets for the Labrador Festival. Enjoy this Friday. Get along if you can. Uh, like I say, there's a variety of beers and ciders, and I think they've got gins and all sorts on there, but it's always a great day out. Mm. It's just a really good excuse. Just don't, if, if they're going on Friday, don't be too rough for Montrose Watch and Saturday. Watch yourself ahead to Saturday, exactly. Yes. Just, you know, know when to go home. Brilliant. Exactly. All right, listen, we've talked, God, it's, we're, we're well into this podcast. Like, we haven't even talked about Edinburgh. I haven't um, so, spoken about it. Please welcome to Focus Daft, our guest pundits this week, looking back at the game against Edinburgh. It's Henry and Callum Dowdy. How are you doing, boys? All right. All, all right. good. Go all back. good. Go How are you guys? Evening, gents. All good. All right. Um, Great to finally look, have these on. Looking fine. I mean, I feel like the odd one out tonight. If you're watching the YouTube version of it, everyone else is wearing a strip. I'm just wearing a hoodie. But uh, is that is that an original Henry or is that the replica that you've got on? Unfortunately, no, no. This is a replica. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think they do the original in my size, so I've, I've had to go with this. <laughs> did you? I mean, you're a little bit older than, than your son Callum there, Henry. Did you have the original yourself? Nope, 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 nope. Unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, not. I'm de- I'm desperate to get. And there, Callum, is is that you're Callum? You're too young to have that. Uh, it's, it is a replica. It is a replica. <laughs> the, 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 where did you get that from? That word, Callum's. Oh. If you listen to the the, the the audio version, Callum's got the old checkerboard, uh, different blue. Chris Waddle obviously famously wore that. Uh, uh, it was. I can't remember what it was. They've done a few of them. They've done like the one my father's got on as well. I can't remember the name of the website. I haven't top my head. But uh, they've done a few fuck up tops every year. But they only did them in quite kind of limited, limited batches. Oh yeah, I know that. I think oh. I know the company you're talking about. Yeah, I got conned out of one of those companies once. They were doing the classic kind of blue patched Beezer Homes ones, and I, that's my all time favourite top. And I went and bought one, and I got done for forty quid, and I never saw that top. Oh no. Anyway, boys, thanks for coming on Falk at Daft. Really appreciate your time. Let's get into the questions. Father and son duo, love it. Um, let's start off with Henry. Out with the Holy Trinity. You're not allowed to pick any of the Holy Trinity. Henry, who is your favourite all-time Falk at player? So, we've been going consistently to games for the last 10 years, so it would have to be somebody for that period. And uh, for me... That there can only be one guy, Will Volks, absolutely. Uh, obviously, as somebody said already, there's, there's such a good story behind him. Came in, got his way into the team, could play right back, could play centre mid. I'm sure, I even seen him play centre back at times, yeah. filling in. And uh, just for such a young guy, such a great presence around the stadium. I mean, I, I remember taking Callum to Junior Burns and Will was pretty much Sarah Scott's right hand man. He was always putting himself forward, it's always there for everybody. Yeah. Great guy. And I mean, when you see some of the awards that he's had down south, like he's worked with Bluebell Wood, we all of them, he's stuff he done during the pandemic with Cardiff. Yeah, not only just a, a great player, but just somebody who's you're proud to have somebody like that at your club. Great guy. Yeah. And if you haven't heard, uh, he's actually going to be our next guest on Falkirk Daft Meets. We had a wee conversation with him this afternoon, actually, and he's going to be on the, the podcast. Uh, and we were, do you know what? It's really, it's really interesting, Henry, because we spoke to him, and he's a really humble guy as well. And I don't yep. think he realised the impact that he had on the club when we sort of said to him, you know, you're generally regarded as a modern day legend up at the football club. He was quite taken aback by that. You know, he was quite he, emotional about it, actually. He was. About yeah. it. So, it, you know, I don't think he realises the impact that he had while he, while he was up here. So that's really interesting that, that you say that because I think, you know, for, for Callum, particularly, I guess, he was like the kind of standout guy because, you know, we've been through the, the periods of Latape and Stainrod and Callister, yeah. but for the young team, you know, it, that's the kind of player that, you know, him, Sibold, that's their kind of modern modern day greats, you know. So I think Will was very taken aback when we, we gave him that news. I I mean, like I say, just for the for the period that we had him, he just had such a big impact. It, there was just nothing you couldn't love about the guy. I mean, even like you'd seen yourself, it, because he kind of was in Falkirk as well. He was kind of embedded with us a bit, and you know what? You'd see him. You'd see him up the turn. You would right. bumped into him buying dog biscuits and B and M and stuff like that. Eh? It's just. <laughs> And he, and he always had time, always had yeah. time for everybody like you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, aye, great guy. Right, Callum, we've dealt with the best player. What about you, your first memory? What was... What uh, was I can mind my first game. I can mind... Uh, I think it just came about my dad was... He just says, no, I just fancy going to the football. I was like, oh, aye. 
I went, who's who are they playing? They went, oh, Livingston. And I can mind one of my one of one of the boys I went to the school with. He went to all the Falkirk games. I went, so I can mind going in, and I said to him, oh, are you going to the Falkirk Liverpool game at the weekend? <laughs> and he just looked at me <laughs> and he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, I can I can mind it. Uh, I can mind it being one each, and I think it was Alston scored the penalty. Yeah. Or was it a no, I can Alston scored, scored and we missed a penalty. Missed remember, a penalty. Uh, who was the guy that got sent off after it? He lost the plot. Uh, Phil Roberts. Oh, Phil Roberts. Phil Roberts. Yeah. 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 What a He was a bit shy. I didn't like him at all. Uh, no, Phil Roberts. Right. Nah, he was, wasn't he? I think, I think we missed the penalty that afternoon and he just lost the plot after it. Like, uh, again, yeah. I'm sure. Is that the one where he kicked like a bucket of water or something like that? Is that <laughs> <funny>? <laughs> To be fair, I don't think he played for us again after that game, like eh, because yeah, yeah. he just he, he just lost it big time, like, and it was aye. We were we were kind of there, like, oh, I hope we get us every week. This aye, is it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's great. I mean, you obviously still go to the games together to this day, do you? Or are you aye, going aye. with your mates now, Cal? No, no, I still go. Still go. Oh, that's that you're not dumb. Not dumb, dumb Gerald. Young team, eh? S- surprisingly <laughs> enough, I, I, I can. As a parent, you get to a point like where it's like you, you've got to let the bird go free, and that, and it's like on you go. But no, he's uh, me. Speaks, he's my carer. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's is he available there, for additional people to care for? Doing do hires for Saturday, Callum, is what we're asking. No, no, I'm, I'll, I'll need a carer on Saturday, I think. It's, oh, a, it's, it's a role that he's well versed in. Uh, I mean, I think he's kind of his biggest sort of first introduction to it was myself, Callum, and Gary Hill flew over for the day when we played Shelburne at Toka Park. And uh, obviously, the responsible adult, adults maybe weren't quite as responsible as they could have been. So uh, this boy made sure he got the passport sorted out. I think you got GDB about what, 10, 11, 12? Oh, if, you, if you're lucky, <laughs> I don't even think it was that old. So he's, he's been well trained. He's been well trained. Well, but, th- th- this is fantastic painting in action here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love the social it, work it. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Cal. Uh, right, listen, let's talk about the football then, shall we? Uh, Falkirk 4, Edinburgh City 1. And it was four for Callum Morrison at the weekend. Unbelievable. Uh, four changes to the side from Queen of the South. Brad Spencer, Leighton Bisland, Leon McCann and Aidan Nesbitt all coming in the starting uh, lineup. Yates, McGinn, Oliver and Hendel dropping out due to injury. Uh, Ross, any have you heard anything on Hendel's injury? Is it a, just a temporary thing? Or do you I think hope so. Cool? Yeah, I hope so, because he's such a huge player for us, isn't he? And uh, obviously, we know we know his dad, Willie, listens to the podcast, so uh, we'll, we'll need to make sure Willie gives us the inside scoop uh, ahead of the weekend against Montrose. But yeah, fingers crossed Hendel will be back soon, because you do miss him. Uh, I don't think we missed him, as in uh, interrupted us too much, because I think Mackie came in and as you've just said, Mackie came in at the centre half and did amazing uh, on, yeah, on, right, on yeah, Saturday. Um, the only the only shock I, I was kind of surprised with with the team was was Leighton, Leighton Bisling coming in for for Finn, and um, yeah, he obviously got ha- he got subbed at half time, so it, it maybe wasn't the right decision uh, by by John McGlynn that one anyway. I mean, I mean, like... you maybe wonder. Finn's played a lot of games lately. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a case of resting them against, prospectively, who you see as a, a much weaker opponent. Uh, but I was yeah. glad to see Finn come on. <laughs> well, I did. I mean, obviously, I, I missed the game. Was Bisland not brilliant then in the first half? Because he's obviously wanting to see if Bisland, you know, it could be someone that we, could, I guess, take on loan again. But uh, I, it wasn't. It wasn't Finn Yeats. I think is the best way to put it. There was a few loose balls and stuff, aye. Like, but aye, he kind of he, 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 oh yeah, the start of eleven on Saturday. He was he was probably the weakest of the eleven that started. Yeah, so we're not thinking. I don't I don't know what the, obviously the contract is with Biz, situation is with Bislin at the end of seeing if he's a, on going to be available from Dundee United or not. But Mark, from think, what I've seen so far, I don't know if I'd be rushing to to sign the lad up if I'm being honest. But yeah. Yeah. I would have to say the same if I'm being honest. Right. right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Sean Mackey there coming in at centre half, and all accounts had a very, very good game there, Ross. He did. No, he, he, I thought he did really well. I was, uh, I, I know we passed comment on, on him earlier on in the podcast, but when he got his book in, I did have a small fear that, oh no, because uh, he's a bit of a fight <laughs> uh, with a tackle, but he was phenomenal on Saturday. He really was. His distribution was great. 
he was putting his body on the line when he needed to as well. And um, yeah, he made a good partner. He made a good uh, partnership with, with Big Cole. And you won it, obviously, the penalty, which was after... I mean, it, it seemed that... The, the, I mean, from Edinburgh came close. They, they had the best chance, the first best chance of the game, in, in fairness right. to Edinburgh. Um, but it, 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 did at any point you feel that there was that goal wasn't coming, guys? I think it was always an inevitability, but for the about half an hour period, they were kind of they were fighting back. They were putting us under pressure at times. They had that kind of scuffle in the box where they get two or three shots away, and it was I was kind of thinking, oh, sure they're not here to upset the party. <laughs> <laughs> How I mean, dare I, you? I don't know. I mean, you you kind of look at like the predicament and the situation that they're in, and I kind of thought that they're probably coming to the stadium for damage limitation. Like, they didn't want a beating. They've had a few lately. But they gave it a go. And you know what? Fair play to them. They didn't sit back as I expected. They tried to get us. They had a couple of chances. Like, uh, But I I thought we seemed a wee... I, I don't know if nerve is the right kind of word when we started, but I thought we started a wee bit slowly with a couple of chances. But once we got the goal, we were, we were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I, would, I, would, I would completely agree. Just a nervy first start, and just, just yeah. uh, the crowd. Do you think they were a wee bit kind of nervous in front of that the crowd that were there? I mean, uh, uh, you've seen it happen the last season, well, nearly two seasons now, where it has been kind. It's been in the past. Oh, team, team fans turn up. Teams kind of teams. Almost well, they'll, they'll they'll get a bit kind of nervy about it. But I think it was one of the. I don't know. It's almost like the the strategy in the games are tire them out in the first half and then the second half we always seem to come out better and we always seem to kind of take control of the game and dictate the tempo. Yeah, I mean, but like you say, the, the penalty came and obviously Callum Morrison steps up as he has done all season and strokes it, strokes it away, 1-0 Falkirk and that was just the first of many to come for Callum because the second yep. one came just before half time as well. Um driving into the box um, after play, being played in by Brad Spencer and just firing it under the goalkeeper for 2-0. And then I guess at that point, boys, it's half-time, you're thinking, easy street. Ah, it was at that point, I think, uh, we both kind of felt that uh, the goals will start kind of flooding now, especially after Queen of the South and scoring so late, on getting messed here. Well, all your goals in the second half, we've still got a couple more to come, I think. Mm. Yeah, I, I I I was of the same opinion. I think once you got the second one, because Edinburgh City had had made a good fight of the first half in their defence. Um, but as soon as the second one ran, you thought, right, okay, how many goals are we going to get? It was a weird atmosphere for a chunk of Saturday, though, because we were all we were at the phone. Everybody, <laughs> everybody was there, but everybody was <laughs> there. Everybody everybody's on their phones, and then uh, I know we're going to talk about the moment when the, the news came through eventually, but. It was just a weird atmosphere for a chunk of the game, but it was a relief right. to get the second goal. Uh, so the second half, we come out, 2-0 up, but then I guess at that point, all eyes are going to phones to see of what's course. going up. Definitely. At, up at Cove, and that's when it started feeling a bit weird. I mean, talk me through it, because I'm sitting in a, a, a pub in Copenhagen, <laughs> what was the atmosphere like in 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 the stadium when that when obviously there was just there was just an instant lift like a huge lift like eh? I mean I think like eh, Callum and John said in their interviews they obviously didn't have to look they knew for the reaction of the fans but it really it started to bounce it was it was brilliant and obviously we had that twenty five minute period before Hartley's mob stuffed it up eh, that. You know what we're like. It's it's happening. It's it's, it's going to be this week, eh? eh? But I the, the place really went off, and you know I think I think there was a noticeable lift in the players as well. Eh? I think we kind of raised our game again. I think they obviously it's it's got back to them, and and they've got a buzz out it, and they've kind of went forward like so. I it was eh, a taste of what will happen up in Montrose. I, I think so. Yeah. I think John, it was spine tingling. Like it was weird. Like I know this is. A weird thing to say, but like, see, the, there was just this as one cheer, and then like all three, high, all three sides of the stadium, because obviously there was Bairns fans in the, the north stand as well, and like everybody was up, everybody was like shouting and singing. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was phenomenal. It was a brilliant feeling. 
I mean, it must have been, um, and obviously it gets even better because during that period, Cal Morrison then goes on to score his hat trick, which aye, is exactly. aye. which is mental. Aye. Um, aye. I mean, played through, got a kind of lucky, lucky bounce, and then got it in. It. Good finish. Good finish. Good, got it in the back of the net, and I mean, we we talked about Cal Morrison at the start of the show, uh, Ross, and you know when we talked about play of the year and. I think we said as well that we we're having a debate about who's better, Cal or Calvin. And you know, over the last couple <laughs> weeks, Calvin's kind of went, "Fuck you, boys." It's <laughs> 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 two fingers up to us. Um, but I mean, again, we, we and I want you know your opinion. Right at this point, we're recording on twenty fifth of March. Both Henry and Calm. Who is your player of the year? <sighs> I've, it's a toss up because if you're going off best player, it's got to be more. I mean, he's the, the highest scorer in Scotland. But I've really liked Donaldson this year. He's really taken a step up. And Ken, last year he was a bit. Uh, and folks say it's Ken, oh, well, he's got Lang next to him. But he's had, not had Lang next to him for a couple of weeks and he's still at the same level as he was with Lang. So I think I, it's when you give him the armband, it's, it changes him as a player. Yeah. Henry. So folk are daft are responsible for cold oil. Ah, of course, aye, 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 aye. That's, that's what I'm saying. Aye. <laughs> Henry, you, you uh, go with your son? Again, if, if you go in stats, it's, it's, it's got to be Morrison. Uh, but you know what? It's uh, if, if you're picking it, he's your 98% and the rest of your players are 95 because there, there's been some consistently excellent performances this season. Uh, all the players have contributed immensely. Big Tom Lang at the back. Yates, solid. Leon. Leon, he's never lets you down. No. Uh, Brad Spencer can pick a pass for the middle. He's, he just gives us that kind of composure, that control. Uh, so, aye, it's it's a toughie, but I think I'd go Morrison, if I'm being honest. I think you have to. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting chat coming into the season, I think. But Morrison, if he keeps going the way he's going, like six goals in two games, like he, he, there's no denying it'll be him. Um, McGlynn, obviously, when we went 3 0 up, then kind of rung the rung the changes at that point. Um, Ross McKeever, Nesbitt, and Spencer coming off. How do you think Ross McKeever uh, did on, on Saturday? He's obviously he's only got one goal it's this year so far. Um, Ross, he's well off the 30 goals that you thought he was going to get. Um, but, um, I told you it proves that I know fuck all <laughs> <laughs> um, but how did Ross play on, on Saturday do you think for me he put his usual 110% shift in like eh? uh, I think for one of the goals he plays the ball up the, up the wing aye. Uh, aye you know what I think with the system that we play we've got the kind of three the goals We've got the three players around them that can put the ball in the net like eh? We've even got guys coming for deep that can put the ball in the net like eh? So, I mean, is it, it's like you say, is he that guy that's going to score you 30 goals a season? Probably no, but as a focal a focal point in an attack of four, I, I think he does well. And I, I thought he was all right on Saturday. Eh? It'd be nice to see him get a few more goals. Eh? But, you know what? We've got other people that can contribute. He's still playing his part. So, yeah, you're good. Can I, can I make a, a, a comment, though, so going back to the 30 goals that I said he would score? After, <laughs> when I said that, he had scored like five goals in the space of like two games. So that was my defence. Right, oh, it's okay, Ross, it's fine. <laughs> no, I just have to defend no my opinion. You. No one's um, mocking you. See, see, going back to Saturday, though, I thought I agree with, I, I agree with Henry. I thought he was a... Uh, uh, an 8, 9 out of 10 performance again from him. The only thing that would have made it even better if is he had a, a really good opportunity score. Uh, and I What's think that? John, John McGann talks about it in his uh, interview as well. He, he should have done far better with that. And that's that's a, it's a second week on the bounce where he should have done better uh, with his finishing. Um, I think once this is done, I think we'll see a bit of Shanley. Um, yeah. Who I'm not saying is better than him because I don't think he is, but I think um, after this weekend, I can see Shanley getting a bit more game time between now and the season because it's Shanley that's obviously fighting for a contract, whereas uh, Ross has signed up. And Shanley seems to have just he's, he's got a bit about him, Shanley. Like, eh? he's, he's got a bit of attitude, what I like to see in a striker. Like, he's, no, he's not afraid to leave the foot in when need be, let a defender know he's there. I think he just needs a goal, a couple of goals, and, and yeah. you could see him score a few. 
Yeah, I, I think, like Ross said, I'd like to see him get a run in the team because I think there's goals in there. Um, and like you say, Henry, he, he does have the air of a striker about him that knows what he's doing. He has a kind of a, a level of experience above his, his age, I would say. Um, so, no, I, I would like to see actually Shanley have a run in the team because, he, you know, he's got, like you say, he's playing for a contract potentially. We know we've got yep. Ross next season, so why not have a look at him and, and, and see what he can do? Another guy, you know, came off the bench as well is Ethan Ross as well. And I, I don't know what his contract situation is. Every I'm sure he's out. I'm sure he's out at the end of the season. Yeah. Because the way it's looking, I mean, if you've got a boy out at the end of the year, he's played the first. Because they seemed raging. Wraith fans, they weren't, didn't seem best pleased that they let, him, they let him go. So with the way that he's kind of it's a six-month loan, now it's a year loan, if he's out of contract at the end of the year, it looks to me as if it's positioning for McGlint to can sit down at the end of the year, put the contract down and say, look, mate, you've done well, can, and you come, can I? I mean, he came close to it before uh, Morrison's fourth goal with that, that yep. shot from the mm. edge of the box. So that, in that point, we're still winning the league at that point as well. Um, he's a, a player I've, I've talked about in this podcast many a time who just seems to ease his way into the game. He glides past players. Yep. He'll, always, he'll always pop, be in there or thereabouts, you know, not well, you know, knocking, taking shots, beating men. I, I really like the look of Ethan Ross, and I really hope it's a player that... Him Definitely. and I want to talk about a man now who apparently impressed at the weekend, Dylan Tate Ross. Oh. Dylan Tate was aye, aye, he was phenomenal uh, on Saturday. Um, I was, it, you know, it, it's not just the wee flicks and tricks that he knows he can do as well, but his distribution on Saturday, um, spraying spraying the ball around the park was just phenomenal. He's a he's a box to box player too. We forget he, he he looks older than he actually is, and he plays. I think he. I think he plays older than he's he is. He's got a, an air of maturity around him. Like he definitely he, he, does. He's game yeah. awareness. He always kens when he's got a man in his shoulder. Without even Ken, he'll not even hear the shout and he'll ken. Almost like he just feels that he's got somebody behind him. Or he always seems to be able to pick the space. Huh? And I was I was really impressed with his work rate on Saturday. Uh, I mean, he, he just didn't stop. I mean, that was for the third goal. He robs the the guy five for uh, Edinburgh. And he gets out to Morrison. Uh, sorry, Miller on the wing. So he just, he just kept on going like eh? and again, I think I think it's the same with Ethan Ross. When you look at these two players, they clearly fit into our system. They clearly fit into our dressing room. Ross is maybe going to be a contract. You look at Dylan Tate's situation. I know he's got a year left at Hibs. The Hibs have got a vet. If somebody coming in with quite a lot of money, so I mean, is, is, would I be right in thinking as Hibs that's got the, the yeah, investor? Got, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, I mean, is, is Dylan Tate going to push into a Hibs side that's probably going to sign? I wouldn't think so. So, you know what? I would, try and, I would definitely try and get both in the summer. Yes, if, definitely. Yep. I, I, um, I, agree. I, I mean, what? because what I was going to say is, like, obviously, Hendo's dropped out of that midfield and, you know, pre, was playing, obviously, centre-half against Queen of the South and then was, was missing. And you thought you were going to miss that physicality against two big physical teams, by the way, Queen of South and Edinburgh. Oh, yeah, um, You thought you were going to miss that physicality in there, but Dylan Tate has stepped into that that role in midfield and, and, and seemed to have done very, very well, certainly over the last couple of games. And as someone, like you say, he, Ross, he's, you think he's older than he is because of his, how he, he plays in the ball. And I, so I much, think yeah. Yeah. He, he would be a, a, a great addition to the squad for next season as well. Yeah, no. Sorry, no. I was just, I was just going to agree. I think he's a, an absolute Rolls Royce of a player, and um, I think wherever he goes, uh, uh, well, obviously, I know it never worked out for him at Hamilton, but it's a basket case of a club these days. So, um, yeah. but, but uh, for uh, us, he's been fantastic. Sorry, him. No, uh, it's like you say, with Tate, he just he seems to be getting better with game time. He, he seems to be getting up to the pace of the game there. And it, it, it just like you say on Saturday, he was brilliant. And like, I know we kind of mentioned what happened at Hamilton, but Dylan Tate and John McGlynn are a very good fit. You can see the respect that Tate has for McGlynn. And I think that's also adding. He's comfortable in the place that he's playing football. So I get him in. That's what I say. Aye. Definitely. Well, it was McGlynn that brought him through at Wraith. So yep. they've already got that, that connection together. Ken. McGlynn Ken's how to best use him because he's seen him playing it younger teams and he's seen right well he's better as a box to box he's good with the body's feet again he's, he's signed a player that's keep a key fit for his for his midfield yeah oh. um, I'd, I'd love to see both of them and on contracts for next season um yep. 
now what happened first because timing wise did we score the fourth goal or did Hamilton uh, score before that I think it was about this it must have been about the same time it couldn't have been much in it a couple of minutes maybe yeah. I think it was just a minute or two and we scored we certainly scored first uh, before the news filtered through um, I I only realised because it usually somebody texts but then the young team started saying uh, they were slagging off Paul Hartley <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember what the chant was, but you were like, Oh Christ, I bet you they've scored. Uh, and they had. Was it potent- potentially Paul Hartley? You're a wanker, you're a wanker. Could have been, yeah, could have been. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 probably. It's not along the lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, um, so I, I mean, how did it feel around the stadium at that point? It was weird, it was mere towards, I mean, at the 2 1. I mean, they scored two goals right quick, so I don't think there was really much of a difference. But leaving the stadium, it, there was folk around it. They were acting as if we'd can just been beat or we'd just been relegated or something. And it's disappointing, but at the end of the day, we're going to go up to Montrose next week. All things, I mean, obviously there's the opportunity we could win it before we even kick a ball and there's a chance that we'll have to go out and win it in the park. But either way, it's... It's not the end of the world. It's, it's not just a bad situation to be in. Damn that last minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, it's been five years. We can wait another week. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was that last minute goal against Annan if we if we had won that game. Oh, we'd oh. All these if buts and movies. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. But well, I said I'm not complaining. I get the chance to see the team potentially win the league because I'm here this weekend, so I'm quite happy. But we've got you know we've got six chances at it over the next. Uh, if you want, so, so only I was going to say though, it's only a point really needed, but it's really three, which is really annoying as well. Because if we get a point at the weekend, it's like I don't know if we've won it yet, but we have kind of. So, aye. I, he mean, said that exactly half an hour ago. There's another uh, benefit. Another benefit to uh, to no winning it this weekend. Uh, obviously, yes. we'll win the league at Montrose. The next game, guard the honour, and it's Cove. So. It swings and roundabouts. The man that put us down is the man that will be clapping us on the field after we've won the league. We've so. got to do it for that guard of honour. We've got to do it. This uh, Come on, Burns. Um, but yeah, it, it, we talked about um, Edinburgh got one back. I mean, it was a bad goal to lose when you look at that. It was, it was just, I think it was just uh, switched off. It's almost like he's switched off for two settings and it's, it's kind of coast, but pass is short. Aye. 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 Was it me, or could someone have just got back and got that off the line, by the way? I just felt that they just gave I up. Saw, it. Do you know, it was really slow motion. I, 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 uh, I, I, yeah, I just thought, someone can get uh, someone can get back and slide that in off the line. I just watched that. I think it was called. I don't know if it was Cole or... Yep. Um, I think it was Sean Mackey that was the closest to the to I, the ball, I think. I think it was, anyway. I'm just like, get back and get that off. The, but no, it's less than 4-1. We'll take it. It was a young lad who came to the academy that scored it, so... 4-1, up the road, three points, but obviously it wasn't to be the league win. Fingers crossed that's at Montrose. Um, thank you as our, to our resident Stato, Donald Johnson, back in touch. Uh, he says, that, uh, since the 1960s, that's only the third time a Falkirk player has scored four goals in a competitive match in over 60 years. Alex Ray did it against Albion Rovers on the 30th of September, 1989. Of course, the famous Hugh Maxwell scored all seven Versus Clyde on the 9th of December 1962 after the war from 1946 to 1959. Five Bairns each scored four goals in a competitive match, namely George Brooks away to Hamilton in 46, Jimmy Ingalls uh, home to Hamilton in 46, Archie Aikman against the Albion Rovers in 49, Angus Plum famously in a League Cup did it twice in two weeks, wow, against uh, H&A and uh, uh, Cowden Beath. And the great Doug uh, Moran got four in 1959 versus four for so Callum has joined a fairly elite band and his name will be remembered forever for scoring four goals in one match. So there you go. In modern times, and certainly this century, is his first one. Everyone says Pedro did it in, um, obviously, the, the game. <laughs> the Dutch too, yeah. Yeah, Dingo or whatever. We're not taking I'm that. I'm not sure Pedro we can story. count that, can we? No, I doubt we can no. take that, Pedro. Um, no. So well done to Cal Morrison. Um, and you'll see in my background, grabbing the badge and uh, obviously signing his new deal. I'm never a big fan of badge kissers. I wouldn't hold my hand up. He did kiss the badge right enough. He just grabbed the badge. You know what, though, John? He's, he's been with the club long enough, yes, though. He has. Like, he's nice. been with the club long enough now, and he's been through the shit, and he's, yep. stayed, and he's now here when it's going brilliant. 
And uh, yeah, he's he did, like, listen, he can do what he wants. He's, uh, do you know, he's, as, as we said, <laughs> as, we, as a player we didn't think we were going to have last season, you know, exactly, we, we thought he was going to be a way to, to another, you know, it amazes me to this day that a Motherwell or St. Mirren or a team of that ilk haven't looked at what he's done and think he's out of contract, was, like, get, get him a free contract. It was when Craig Levine get the St. Johnson joke because it was him that brought him through at Hearts. So I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, there's your, there's your signing that's kind of written in the stars for Craig Levine to bring him right up and help him, help them kind of drag themselves to a, a half decent finish. But, but yeah, I mean, he's he's local to the area. He's I think he yep. I think he lives in Dunblane actually. Um, John, we're a bigger club than all these teams. <laughs> No, we are though. We're we're a bigger club than uh, I'm not talking about Hearts. We're a bigger club than St Johnson. We're a bigger club than Motherwell. We're a bigger club than St Mon. I know we're no. We're we are. You, you can't say we're bigger position. than Motherwell or St Mon. Can you? Of course. <laughs> you, you're shitting me. Of course we're a bigger club than these. Teams. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Of course we're. Not. <laughs> we're not, obviously they're in the Premier League, right? So obviously that's that's the one thing we're not. But in terms of the club, we are a far bigger club than St Mirren and St Johnston. Oh, definitely. Uh, Johnson, I would say, aye. It's but, Motherwell. There are another... Motherwell community only come out and back the, the Motherwell team when they're third and fourth in the league. Watch, look at their crowds, look at that. Look at how the fans have kind of deserted uh, the club. We've, n- we've not deserted our club and we've been down far lower than some of these clubs will ever be. So, yeah, that's a good point yeah. to me. There you go. Right, OK. Ran oh, over... Also- <laughs> if you're to the other <laughs> supporters, they'll be on you straight away, Ross. Uh, right, okay, let's hear what Mr. McGlynn had to say after that match. John, a, a really convincing win. Um, perhaps slightly disappointing that we didn't um, clinch the league title at home today, but at the end of the day, it's, it's another win and another step closer. We were just focusing on ourselves, you know, from our point of view, the team... Uh, backroom staff. We weren't interested in another game. We were, we were interested in this game. We were we are very focused in this game. We've had difficult games against Edinburgh in the past. You know, uh, no more so than the last game in Edinburgh uh, when it finished to each and we had to scramble a penalty in the last minute. So we knew uh, that it would be a difficult opponent. So for us to come here and well, for us to win four one, very convincing. Uh, just a pet we lost that goal in the last minute. It was a bit annoying, uh, but nonetheless, it's four. It could have been four at half time. You know, Big McIver's went through 1v1 and Calvin uh, Miller's got a great opportunity to score. I'm sure Callum had a good opportunity as well. But, you know, delighted that it was 2-0 at half-time. But I thought we were scrappy. I didn't think we were flown as well. Uh, but I thought the second half we were much better. And we've scored two goals in the first half, two goals in the second half. But I actually thought we were much better. I thought we had much more control in the game. It wasn't so end-to-end. Uh, Callum, Callum's took his goals really well. All four goals, you know, a bit of pressure on his last penalty there. We haven't scored one. Does he put it back in the same corner? Does he change his corner? He's changed his corner and done the goalie. So, you know, delighted for him. Four goals, I'll remember that for forever, you know. It's not very often you score four goals. He's been knocking on the door to get in three. He scored a number of times twice this season. So, d- delighted for him. But again, I thought Dylan Tate was immense in midfield. Uh, Colin, a great for Sean Mackey. Liam Henderson's calf kind of flared up and he couldn't play. So Sean's not played in central defence this season. So fair play to him, stepped in, done the job. Call was good as well. Uh, you know, so I thought midfield were, were really good. Nizzy again involved in a lot going on. Uh, Brad, you know, again pulling the strings beside Dylan there. We're very good and the wingers are always going to give us a threat, which has happened uh, with, with Callum getting these goals and Goal, he's made a couple of great saves. Uh, even Ethan Ross did a brilliant shot and great save with the goalkeeper again. So, delighted to win 4 1. Yeah. We've done our part. We move on now to next week and Montrose. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Does ever get John McGlynn to smile? I'd love to have a game of just trying to get John McGlynn to smile, just telling him jokes to see if we can get him to laugh. <laughs> see what, I, do who want, can... I do want it to happen when he gets in fr- Hendo, if you're listening to Hendo or Willie Henderson, get your boy to get 
be going over to that s- ultra section and doing the dance before the end of the season. It needs to happen because I'd love to see, come on, John, you've just won 4-1, you're on the precipice of winning the league and I quite like that about him though. I quite I like the fact what, he's yeah. always calculated, he's always calm. Even yeah. when when we like after every game, it's no ah uh, we're seventeen clear here and we're scushing it. It's always we just focus on the next game, focus on the next game. And I I respect that about him that he's no getting caught up in it. He's just taking it as it is. But just get a probably smile on his face. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be smiling at half seven next time. Right? Oh, I'm your right right tickle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, you're right though. He's always a cool guy, you know. Like you can even can you? What's I don't know. I can't remember quite what the phrase is, but he he would be like a kite in a hurricane. He would just be so calm still. Yeah, you know, oh, <laughs> see, just uh, before we move on from Falkirk TV, though, did you watch the Callum Morrison uh, interview? Right. And uh, Adam says to him, "You might be getting a call from." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I that's what I listen. Get him on that plane to the Euros. That's what we Wait off. Super Callum Morrison. Uh <laughs> listen, listen, let's see what the supporters had to say on the match. James kicks us off for 25 minutes. It was beautiful. A goose pump moment when the KM stand erupted and everyone went for the phones to check the score at Cove. CM7 in no doubt for a man of the match, but thought Mackey was immense for us. Even adding a cry turn for the banter. See you in the troops. It was That's so great. Right. It was it was one of them. It didn't move with the ball. The ball just stood where it was. He just kind of pirouetted out of the ball Brilliant. and somehow in the man. Tremendous. Love it was it. class. Can't it was class. Uh, Scott says, Mackey gave Cal a run for Man of the Match. Disappointing not to win the league today, but what a chance it'll be uh, to win it on TV next weekend. Special shout out to the Edinburgh fan cheering Hamilton winning. At least he had something to be happy about is his team are gash. <laughs> Uh, we did very comfortable delighted for Morrison and loved the fact he grabbed the badge during one of his celebrations never seen him do that before full force Mackey was actually really good as well we are some team indeed Uh, Lewis says what about a business McGlynn and Smith have done tying down Morrison would love to see Yeats Tate and Ross all secured going forward it's clear to see the culture that the staff and players have created meaning maintaining this will be the key to our future success just as we were saying earlier uh, Gio says today was the day that Cal achieved legend status, having signed for another two years and grabbing that badge. He loves us as much as we love him. Love it. Uh, Grant says three points, never in doubt. Mackey, Call and Tate, all excellent, but Morrison stole the show and no shock to see him get man of the match. Another very big support, hopefully going up to Montrose next week to see us win the league and after five long, hard years, finally get out of League One. Yep, Pizzo. I can't wait for Saturday, by the way. I'm absolutely buzzing. Oh, yeah, I'm counting. <laughs> four days and counting, four days and counting. Uh, Pizzo says, fantastic performance. The point of positives, Morrison, the obvious choice for man of the match. But a special mention to Dylan Tate, who ran the show in midfield, on to Montrose. Indeed. Paul says, weird feeling being disappointed when you win 4-1. Your team unbeaten in the league. You're 17 points clear at the top and one win away from the league title. Well, don't be don't be disappointed, Paul. <laughs> Just enjoy this, son. <laughs> and uh, Homer's twin comes in. By the way, John, the Miller-Morrison debate was put to bed today. It's Morrison. He was outstanding again today. Now the top SPFL scorer passing Shanklin. There you go. So well done, Cal Morrison, reaching that. And if he can keep it going until the end of the season, that's a phenomenal achievement. Our Stato man, Donald, who was the last Falkirk player to be the highest scorer in Scotland? Has there ever been one? Surely there have been one at some point, but... <laughs> The oh, year, was... the year that Cadet scored about thirty. Yep. Aye. Surely he must have been close. I suppose the only issue would have been at that point. I bet you, like Ali McCoy was scoring. Aye, there'll like, be somebody with we, forty-five or something. Yeah, so we'd need to have a look at that one. But Richard Cadet, I'm sure he scored yeah. about 28, 29 um, in the the first division. Certainly, I'd love to see that start. We'll look into that one for next week. That's what we'll for next week. Right, okay, I, I don't think it's a very hard question to answer. Who's the Falkirk Daft rated player of the match? Can can only, one. Uh, can only be Morrison. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, easy one this week. Easy peasy this week. Ross, I'm taking. There's no disagreement. No, not at all. Yeah, had to be. Had to be Cal. Uh, Falkirk Dafty. 
uh, we did see somebody, <laughs> uh, and it's one of them ones. I've seen a few folk with their inflatable trophies, and I was like, oh, that's tempting fate too much for me. Like, I didn't even bet on Falkirk, so bringing an inflatable trophy when it's low in our hands if we win the league. But I did see one guy. It was about ages with me. Aye, about <laughs> ages with my dad, running lengths down the front of the south stand with a so full kit and an inflatable trophy, running laps as if he was warming up to come on. So I seen that and I had to, I had to take a drink. <laughs> I was like, I've had you see, and I, I says to him and I was like, have I seen that right? And he went, no, I, is that a, that's a boy in a full kit. But I had the name on the back and everything, so I, at least he's went the full nine yards with it. I think he's weird. Right, so he's committed, he he's committed, I like it, I like it, but no, I'm... Admirable, like, uh, top parent in there. Uh, fuck it, Dafty, who do you pick this week? That's a toughie. Do we go Paul Hartley because he's, his mob couldn't well, even listen, hold I'm, off for the last I'm, seven minutes? Listen, I'm, I'm happy with Paul Hartley being fucked after the week. Let's absolutely go for Paul Hartley. Every I'm single around. week. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Ross, no disagreement? No, I'll go with Hartley as well. Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Right, okay, we're all in agreement with that, and superb. Uh, boys, thank you so much um, for coming on. You's a, we'll see you up at Ventros, presumably. Uh, you's well yeah, you'll see us Aye, on definitely. the picture about half past seven. Right, right, right I'll tell you what, <laughs> um, half past seven, I'll meet you at the halfway line, all right? All right, all right, all right I'll go. meet you there. Deal. Fantastic. Uh, listen, if you want to be like Henry and Callum, you can come on as a father and son duo. We'd love to have you on. Remember, just drop us a DM on Twitter, Facebook, or you can drop us an email to me and Ross, pundit at falkirkdaft.co.uk. This is Falkirk Daft. Okay, it's time to look ahead to Montrose, potentially a historic day in the history of the club as we go on to try and win the League One title. Uh, and he's been with us all season. It's my mate, Mark, who's with us, and he's got a picture of Ryan Williamson behind him, if you're listening to it today. Uh, and he's sitting in his Montrose track, so his little Hummel number. It's quite a nice little track suit, that, Mark. Yeah, it's a couple years old, this one. It's not this season's one, but... I quite like that, I quite like that. Uh, how's it been going in Montrose way? Um, last couple of results haven't been great for you and you've kind of lost that bit of momentum that you had into the playoffs. Uh, um, well, we lost to still in Albion with a last minute goal from apparently a really poor game. I wasn't at the game, but apparently both teams were really awful and Montrose were marginally more awful over the 90s. Um, Draw the game for that, and that's off the back of three wins. So I wouldn't say forms nosedived terribly badly. I mean, we're still sitting no, fourth no, in the I league. I wouldn't say nosedived, but I mean, it's lucky for you that obviously Allah, but just above you, have lost the last two as well. So it keeps that. Yeah. I mean, it keeps that like quest for the third and fourth um, between you know you, Allah, and Kovic keeps it really really tight. Um, do you think you'll have the you know the, the momentum to to keep going and? You've still to play. Are you still to play out on Cove, is that right? Uh, yeah, still to play both. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what's it? Six games to go. Um, we've got a small squad. We've got a part-time squad. We've got a lot of injuries. We've got a lot of old players. So, I'm not going to make any daft predictions. But I mean, we're still up the right end of the table. I think we're probably far enough ahead of Kelty now that unless our form nose dies and they really start picking up points faster than they have been for the last couple of months, then we're probably far enough away from them and Sterling to be okay. So it's, uh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, definitely. You're from three, really. Yeah, you're not getting and Cove's probably the only risk that you've got there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're only three points behind. Uh, we've got a marginally better goal difference uh, than both uh, Cove and Agua, so that's maybe slightly in our favour, obviously. It doesn't count for much if you start dropping points. But... Yeah, it does yeah, we're still up there. Looking at the weekend, yeah, it was just Paul. It was Paul Watson's testimony there at the weekend. There, am I right in saying that, Mark? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and um, I also did. So was it that well attended? A lot of people out for that. Uh, a few hundred, uh, not massively well attended. It wasn't a full house or anything like that. But yeah, it was good to. I wasn't there, but it was um, yeah, good to commemorate. He's been there twelve years, title winning captain. Uh, he's been there from relegation playoff up through the divisions. So yeah, good to uh, pay tribute to him. I can't believe he's, I mean, like, he came obviously, he came on against us, I think. I mean, the last time we played you guys, it was a bit of a canter for Falkirk down at our place in, in, the, in that midweek game. But I thought when you brought on Watson and Gardine, it made a big difference um, to you. Yeah, I can kind of understand why he rested so many players, because I, I assume the assumption was that we were going to lose that game anyway, so might as well rest 
some of the older first team players that uh, don't have ninety minutes left in them anymore, and obviously didn't play out the way that he'd planned. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys in our team that can't do ninety minutes week in week out anymore. Uh, Watson, to be fair to Sean Dillon, he pretty much manages it. But yeah, there's a few sets of older legs there. Yeah, um, what's the reaction? I mean, we were we obviously there's been two and a half thousand tickets being put on sale for the Falkett supporters. What, how have the fans sort of taken to that news, Mark? All right, I think you might even get more than that um, because it's a title challenge. I think you're probably looking at maybe up to three, three and a half, or just under three and a half. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to grudge you that. I, I, take I you long, it, take you long enough to get to that position. So I take it. It's, oh, there you go. There's the usual dig. Um, <laughs> I, I take it. It's more about getting money into the club because I'm assuming a, a lot of people are assuming that we're winning the league at some point. I'm still not saying anything. I have said that. Come on, Joris. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. But um, but yeah, seventeen it, ahead with eighteen to play. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. It's going to be some comeback if I'm not winning the league. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's um, obviously the annoying thing from a focus perspective, and we've talked about this throughout the podcast today, is that if we get a point, we're in this really awkward kind of no man's land of like we've kind of won it because our goal difference is 16 better than Hamilton's, yeah. but it's not mathematically you know, correct. So it's like we're going to just total no man's land of like, should we pitch invade? But then, as, but then, as we know, Hamilton are playing at three o'clock. So who knows how what the table potentially could be come half five? So it's bah, listen, it is what it is. If it's not this weekend, it'll be it'll be next weekend. I mean, we, we know. I mean, Montrose is one of the few places we've drawn this season as well, and that was the, the start near the end, start of the season. Who drew up up there in the kind of midweek game? What? How do you think it's going to go this weekend, Mark? And if you got any major players out of the side, um, I think Watson's probably not fit. He didn't play the full part of his testimony. He went off injured against uh, who, a couple of weeks ago. He went off injured with a knackered knee, and he was heavily strapped up for his testimonial on Saturday. Yeah. Um, Terry Masson's on the way back. Ed Waddle's still out. Um, I think most of the others are probably. There or thereabouts, so still carrying quite a few injuries, and yeah, not H- a full Hester, H- Hester Webster and Lines are all available though. As far as I know, yeah, yeah, Blair Lines, yeah. Lines has always been a player that's impressed me at Montrose. Yeah, Blair Lines is the one that's most likely to win us a penalty because he dinks about with the ball and invites stupid challenges. So, yeah, I'm still going for Ryan Williamson, 93rd minute, 30 yard drive in the top corner after skinning your whole midfield. Straight through the middle of the park like cafe. God, it's uh, you know what? That's the sort of thing that gives me the absolute. And then thing. along the front of the stand, just giving it the old cup tea like he did at Grangemouth at the start of the season. It, it just it gives me the fear. Uh, how did that one uh, end for him though? <laughs> that's fair enough. Uh, as a, yeah, as a <laughs> um, so yeah, title potential winner uh, for Falkirk at the weekend. Looking forward to the uh, for the Falkirk sports heading up. Mark, what pubs should we be going to? Uh, the closest one to the train station is the Picture House, which you can see from the train station, and then just head up in a straight line towards the ground. You'll pass Market Arms, you'll pass the Star, uh, and right next to the ground is the uh, Legion. So, yes, I've, I've drank. I think I've drank in every single one of those pubs with you the last time I was up, Mark. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure you have. Uh, that's the straightest line from the train station to ground. Yeah, cool, cool. And what do you think the score is going to be on Saturday, Mark? I just told you, 1 0, Ryan Williamson, 93rd minute drive in the top corner from 30 yards. Ross, Wayne, what do you think the score is going to be? It's, I think it'll be a tight scoreline, but I think uh, if if we have to win it on Saturday, then we will. I'm going to go 2 1, 2 1 Burns. I think it might, I think it might just, I'd like, to, I'm going to go 1 0 the other way for Falkirk, and I can just imagine the scenes. 93rd, go the other way, 93rd minute, Callum Morrison wins us the league up there, scenes. Absolutely. Would you rather have a 93rd minute Callum Morrison winner or a 93rd minute Ryan Williamson OG? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A Ryan Williamson OG would be magnificent. I know it would be. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to the game. Right, so will we see you for a pint at the picture house, Mark? Her train gets on at half on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll 
Yeah, definitely. Are you coming up as well, Ross? Yeah, yeah, we're getting the train up, buddy. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll see you there. And then at that point, you can hand over me the money or or maybe get you after the match. You can hand me over the money that you you owe me for Falkirk. um, You said we we wouldn't win the title this season. So, Uh, so you're you're wanting to claim it before kickoff, are you? No, I will go. I'll, I'll come meet you after. I'll, I'll see you in the pitch, Mark. Right? If you jump in, like you could join and be the only Montrose player to join in the pitch invasion if we win. Aye, that'll be right. I'll meet you in the halfway. I'll meet you in the centre circle. All right. I hope you get lifted. <laughs> Both well, of you. A night in the cells in Forfar. Well, hopefully, hopefully, it's the last time we we speak to you in a long while, Mark. Well, no, because we're going up as well, so it'll be fine. All right, well, that's true. We might, no, that's we, true. Might, yeah. we might have to put up with another season of this, Ross. Jesus Christ, I've been <laughs> a nightmare. But all right, well, listen, thanks for uh, coming on this season, Mark. Really appreciate your insight into Montrose. Anytime. This is Falkirk Daft. Well, that was an epic episode, wasn't it? Jesus, we've had a, we had Graham Carbis on, we've had Mark on talking about the Trolls game, and of course Henry and Callum talking about the Edinburgh game. Wow, what an, an epic long episode of Falkirk Daft! Thank you very much for listening and sticking with us. Um, God, it's not we've only got about six episodes to go before the end of the season as well, Ross. Yeah, um, plus our plus our live event, obviously. Plus our live event. Yep, that's not God. That's not far away now as well. That's not far. Like, creep up on it as well so we need to try and work out what we're going to do on it that'll be a fantastic <laughs> night for all of you that have bought a ticket don't you worry we've got a plan don't worry you don't worry we do. uh, right listen thanks very much for listening please rate review the podcast on Apple Spotify wherever you get podcasts if you're watching us subscribe leave a comment below it helps with the algorithms I don't know how this works um, merch you can get it before the end of the season if you want to be sporting a fantastic way you got the t-shirts printed yet Ross Champions T-shirts? No, we better wait till it's official. We'll wait till it's official, and we can, do you know what? I'll see. I'll see what I can do about getting something designed for the Daft Champions T-shirts. Uh, but yeah, you can get any Volker Daft merch you want. Merch dot uk, and you can get in touch with the podcast if you want to advertise on it. If you want to just leave some banter for us, that's great. Uh, John at Volker Daft dot co dot uk or Ross at Volker Daft dot co dot uk. My voice is almost gone, um, but. Yeah, it's on to Montrose. Hopefully, it's back for that so I can join in with the singer on Saturday. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure it will be. You'll have a few uh, beverages to uh, loosen the singing vocal cords as well. The more and more I think about it, the more and more I want Sterling to get something at Hamilton. So we can just enjoy it. Just so we can enjoy it, because you, you imagine how much of a part it will be in that stadium if we won the league without yeah. having to do anything. And it, it's just, you know, the, the boys in the park will, you know, they'll want to stay invincible. But you, it, just that awkward feeling of the draw is putting me right off it. I was drawing and then like, we're all just going to be standing there going, what do we do? We're, we're, we're one, we kind of, you know, what do we do? Mm. <laughs> so, so I know, I, I, I think I'm, my preference is that we win it before. What about you? Do you know, I'm just, I'm, I, I kind of want the excitement of winning the game and we'll we've, we've, we've gain promotion because we've won it on the night. But listen, I'll be happy either way. You're right, what a party it'll be uh, in the pub beforehand and then uh, at the game if it's already done. So there will be way. people that will not make it to the game if, we win, if, if we win. I'll tell you that right now, there will be people that just will not make it to the game if, uh, if Hamilton not still do us a favour on Saturday afternoon so no, looking forward to the out and what will be will be as we yes, yes, uh, but we will be back hopefully next week um, celebrating the league title fingers crossed but until that time expect unexpectedly on the bounce <laughs>